So I really like playing the Patri. It's really, really fun, but it does worry me a little bit about the direction of top tier. I think that this ship just is too good at long range. And we're gonna see just how much better it is than something like a Hanover, which is also a super battleship, right? It's tier 11 uh, class of ships. And really, even though the Petri doesn't have any special gimmick, right? No reload booster, no, you know, accuracy bonus, secondary bonus that it can activate in battle, that kind of thing. It's just so good at range. Just look at these distances, 23, 24 kilometers some of this time, and it's only 13 seconds to lead, which is not all that much. A lot of cruisers are leading that much for 18 kilometer shots, right? So this isn't the hardest salvo to land, especially when people aren't paying attention, of course, right? But it really isn't too difficult. And alongside that, just have a lot of guns. So even though we have a worse reload and worse Sigma than something like the Republic, 12 guns is always gonna feel nice and consistent most of the time. Cause as you can see, a lot of these salvos are gonna be reasonably accurate. And I can just take up a position like this, nice and safe, near spawn, and I'm able to have huge battle impact. There's only what, three, four ships that I can't fire at right now, assuming the enemy team would actually get spotted, right? that carrier, and then a few of the ships going up the 910 line. It seems a little extreme, doesn't it? And, uh, well, we're gonna farm out this Hanover now as he is kiting away from this flank. That's a really important thing to make note of too, is this range being so usable allows for a lot of these crossfires to be extremely, extremely punishing. There's a lot of times in this game where you end up showing broadside to some of the enemy team, but oftentimes it's so far away that it's really not that big a deal. With the Petri, it suddenly is a big deal. And I think that's really the fun to be had here, honestly. I really enjoy playing the Petri because of this amazing ability to crossfire and get some huge devastating salvos in. But it might also be a bit of an issue because this video isn't gonna be particularly long because this game ends so quickly. And of course, blowouts are gonna happen no matter what. There's just going to naturally be some matches that end up pretty imbalanced. That's just the nature of a random queue. But I think that adding more spotting earlier on and then ships that are able to deal good, consistent damage with that early spotting could lead to more of these fast games. So the enemy team has essentially given up the south flank at this point. And if you know me, of course, you'll know that I constantly talk about maintaining at least half of the map under your control. If you give up three quarters of the map, you're gonna lose games. And that's what we're gonna see here. These enemy team is just gonna get crossfired into oblivion. And I don't really know what to change here other than maybe the range is just a bit too much. But then again, Republic has similar range and it's also pretty usable. So maybe it comes down to map design. Maybe we need to start seeing slightly bigger maps or even maps with bigger islands that allow for teams to push in and not have to worry about some of these long crossfires. Just notice how this Hanover is just purely in open water at this point. The islands are so clustered and focused around these small central cap zones that a lot of these top tier games feel like you're just playing on ocean with a few little hills to shoot over in the middle of the map a lot of the time. They don't really offer enough protection and pushing up to them often leads to you taking some huge hits earlier on since there is that early spotting and very consistent damage coming in. So I don't know, let me know in the comments below what you think we could do or suggest to Wargaming about this issue. Uh, personally, I would love to see some interesting map designs to try and counter this kind of thing where we're just chasing a Hanover into a spawn and there's really not much he can do. We're both super battleships, remember, same tier, should be similar power levels. And this poor guy is not even able to use his secondaries at all this game, I don't think. So the Petri is a really good battleship. I think we all know that at this point. Unfortunately, it was only available in that auction earlier on. So it was pretty expensive too, but at least once update 11.9 comes, we'll all be able to purchase it the normal way through grinding up XP on the Republic and then just purchasing it almost like it's a tier 11 ship. 
And I really do think that the Patri will be worth it once that update 11.9 comes out, just because it's so consistent. 12 guns and a pretty decent reload, good overmatch, and pretty good accuracy. There are issues, of course, where sometimes the accuracy doesn't quite hold up, but that's with all battleships. Even if we had slightly better Sigma, I don't think that would really change the randomness that sometimes battleships have to deal with. And of course, there is always the uh, shells landing short bug, or I'm not sure, just feature of the aiming system. Um, but yeah, this Minotaur pushing out broadside, trying to make something work this game. I mean, yeah, he's just screwed at this point, right? Like, look at his poor, look at his team, right? This poor guy. And it's not like these games are the most interesting from the winning side either. They sure are frustrating from the losing side. I know that. Uh, but even from the winning side, I really don't find these battles to be all that engaging, since it really just comes down to pushing in and mopping everything up. So. There goes the Minotaur, poor guy tried to push in. And we see as the enemy team is starting to push into this cap here, well, I've already got a good angle to deal with that, right? I'm already pushing into their spawn, getting these broadside salvos in. And that really is just GG. So a lot of the time in a lot of these maps, it's really, really bad to give up one flank of the map. But I know that seems obvious, but it's shocking the amount of times where I see people spawn maybe one or two ships, right, on one side of the map, and they just instantly turn and go towards the middle and the other side of the map. Maybe it's this thought that, oh, there's only one or two of us here, I don't want to stay here and die. But there are ways of playing safe, and there are ways of stalling out the enemy team. And maybe if they do still push very aggressively into your couple of ships, they'll push into a crossfire as long as you're able to stay alive on some of those flanks. It's really important to not give up flanks, otherwise games like this happen. Of course, we're trying to take out the carrier here to close out this game and hopefully push us up towards 200,000 damage. Since 200,000 damage in 10 minutes is a really, really good result and one of those milestones that I'm constantly on the lookout for. Even in these fast games, it is possible. Five minutes for 100k, 10 minutes, 200k. Those kind of milestones are the sign that you had a pretty decent game. Unfortunately, I don't quite realize which way this Ibuki is turning, and I aim a little bit too high. That's not the ship's fault. That is my own aiming's fault. But the battery is just so amazing. I really do like this ship a ton. I'm just worried what this consistent long-range firepower means for the future of this game. And I'd like to see the game be a little bit more close range, a little bit less focused on sniping over these islands into each other's spawn at longer ranges. Of course, we don't quite have battleship overmatch here, 32 millimeters, but we are more than capable of overmatching cruisers. And as we close the range, yeah, even angled cruisers are gonna take some massive, massive damage. 198,000. Uh, we're a thousand away from a 200k, but unfortunately I think this game is just going to come to an end before I'm actually able to get this next salvo off. But still, 200k in this kind of a game, I'm pretty happy with that result. Even if I'm not too happy with how quickly the game ended or how little competition there really was. And just like that, 500 damage short from 200k in a blowout. As for the build, we're of course using a standard battleship build. No fancy secondaries here, it's just a standard build. Because it's a long range battleship, we don't get into brawling secondary range. We want to make the most of our cross shotting ability, shooting from stealth with concealment, and of course we want to stay alive, so fire prevention is definitely a must. Once you do the get this ship, you should notice that the secondaries are only 100 millimeters. so you're not gonna be able to do damage with them. Even with IFHE, it's only a few superstructures you're really gonna be able to do damage to, um, unlike the Republic or the Borgone that start to get 127 millimeter secondaries, which start to be much more useful. Um, so the DPM can look pretty amazing with these secondaries, but uh, yeah, keep in mind that they're not the most useful since they're only 100 millimeters. As for the equipment, it's going to be pretty standard again. We're going main battery mod. You definitely don't need more range than what you've got already. And I'm running concealment system. I'm 
taking steering gears here, mostly because I have a speed boost for those situations where I want to get away or use propulsion to speed juke, that kind of thing. Steering gears is nice so that we are able to swing out and get a salvo off of all of our guns and then swing back in to angle ourselves properly again, since Petri doesn't have the best armor. Aiming systems mod, engine boost is always good on any French ship, so uh, if you have the coal, definitely make use of that. And to look at the armor really quick, yeah, it's, it's French. <laughs> 32 everywhere. So again, some of the other super ships, your weakness is that you're going to get overmatched by all the Satsumas, all the Hanovers, even Yamatos, of course, will be overmatching this ship. Petri is awesome. It's a really, really fun ship to play. I'm just worried about its impact on the meta. And I'm a little sad that it's only been early access, right? Where we only had the um, auction event to be able to get it. But unfortunately, we got to wait until update 11.9 to actually get it. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.